Elle avait 40 ans et c'était un génie en mathématiques. Miriam Mirzakhani. Yet Miriam Mirzakhani had... I wasn't always very excited about math. I was more excited about reading novels and I thought I would become a writer one day. <laughs> I got excited about it maybe just as a challenge, but then I realized that it's really nice and that I enjoy it. These were quite difficult times. It was during the war. Right after the war, I had a lot of opportunities. I went to a very good middle school and then high school. I think I was the lucky generation because I was a teenager when things became more stable. My main interest is understanding structures you can put on a surface. There are different ways of looking at it. Either you have a surface with some additional geometric structures or this kind of problems are related to understanding the space of such structures. One very famous example is if you have a billiard table and you start from a point and you hit the ball and it hits the boundaries and it moves, say, forever, you want to see the trajectory of the ball. Would it cover all your billiard table? Can you find closed billiard paths? And interestingly enough, this is an open question in general if you don't put any restrictions on the angles of the polygon that you started. There are two types of questions. One is about you have a surface, with the geometric structure and you're trying to understand some properties of this geometric structure that you have. The other questions are related to you have a surface and you have a geometric structure and you start deforming this geometric structure and then you want to see what kind of surfaces you would get. Some of the problems like you know the properties of a generic surface, a random surface, but it's really hard to say something about a single given geometric structure on the surface. Some of the work that I've done with different collaborators shows that sometimes the surfaces are very similar to the ones of a generic surface. You can ask these questions about like hyperbolic surfaces or these flat surfaces or different geometric structures. I think these problems are important because they are related to some other problems. Even if you are interested in higher dimensional manifolds, one way of dealing with them is trying to find some nice surface inside of them you end up learning a lot about other spaces and properties of other actions. So it gives you a lot of information. It's not only the question, but the way you try to solve it. My name is Maria. I don't have much time left. Doctors believe that my disease is incurable. I'll die on July 14. By the way, I have a little daughter. Her name is Anna. Hello, Anna. Don't you expect the world to ask how you're doing? It never asks if you're downhearted or overjoyed, if you feel lethargic or full of energy. You never hear it ask if you're striving or feel like a failure. So stand up and keep moving forward. Life is short and opportunities are limited. You don't strive to make the most of life and you'll miss the train ride. Coming to terms with impending deaths, I'm reviewing and reconciling my life before I die in my hospital bed. I think I've not much regret and I've fulfilled my life mission. Two years ago, I was selected as one of the most influential women scientists in the world. International Women in Mathematics Day is celebrated on my birthday. I was honored with the Fields Medal, described as the Nobel Prize of Mathematics in 2014. It will change after some time, and, and, but, it, but it's not something that would change by two in two or three or five years. It, it can take decades, but things like this change and, and there are examples of these kind of changes. And now I'm on my deathbed on July 14. I'll die, but you will stay. This is Iran. 
the high school I formerly attended. My life journey started here. This is where I studied math. Mathematics helped me to be selected as the most influential female scientist in the world, and knowledge of English helped me to be able to communicate, travel, study, and read books in English. I could share and exchange information and express very complicated math explanations in English. And now, I'm writing from the hospital bed to you. I love you, Anna. I love you, Anna. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Bright copper petals and warm woolen mittens. Brown paper packages dried up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Anna. I wouldn't have contributed this much to scientific community if it weren't for two things. First math and then English. And then English.